Hey everybody, this is Blake here. I'm going to be reviewing The Expendables 2. I was looking forward to this movie for so long because I loved the first Expendables. I thought it had a great concept. Get all these old action stars together and put them in a badass action movie that's a throwback to the 80s. Yet at the same time, it brings it, it incorporates a lot of elements of modern day action movies in it, making it the perfect example of old meets new. Um... I personally thought it was it worked because it was so well paced. I was entertained by every minute of the movie. It knew when to slow down, when to speed up. Uh, I thought the action was really good. The fight scenes were really good. Now, this is where I'd stress that this isn't. A, I wouldn't say The Expendables was the greatest action movie ever made. I've seen action films have woodier dialogue, better acting, a better balance of story and spectacle. I've seen action films with more high octane explosions, stunts car chases, shootouts, um, I've seen action movies with better fight choreography, but that's okay because I thought The Expendables did a good job in terms of all of that, and um, like I said, it was really well paced, I thought it balanced the screen time amongst its stars very well, not everybody, not everybody agrees with me there though, so most of those people are Jet Li fanboys, but um, I, I was perfectly happy with it. And um, I could not wait to see The Expendables 2 because it expanded its cast in a much more interesting fashion. All right, you, you, you increase the roles of Bruce Willis and Arnold Schwarzenegger. You got to love that. But you have Jean-Claude Van Damme. Not only is he here, he's playing a villain. And uh, now Jean-Claude Van Damme, like most action stars, he used to be really popular. And then, he, then his star began to dim and he started making direct-to-DVD movies. Usually that's the kiss of death, death for any career. But Van Damme really made it work. Yeah, his movies were significantly cheaper, but at the same time, his acting improved, improved and the fight scenes became a lot sharper. Um, I love the, the, the action sequences in his movies. They're surprisingly well made. Mm. So I'd recommend with Van Damme, if you want to see a, a surprisingly good dramatic role for him, watch JCVD. Um, otherwise, in terms of action, the newest Universal Soldier movie was pretty good. The Shepard was pretty good. Assassination Games was pretty good. So he continues to make great or good movies, uh, even though he's no longer the big star that he used to be. That automatically makes him better than Steven Seagal. But not just Van Damme. You also got Chuck Norris playing a small role, but definitely a memorable one. Uh, now, Chuck Norris, he's unusual because... I really don't know why he took off so well, because in terms of fight scenes, you've seen much better. I mean, he's a he's a genuine badass. That's something nobody can dispute. In fact, I'd personally say he's probably uh, a better fighter than guys like Bruce Lee, because we know, based off his tournament record, that Chuck Norris really could fight. With Bruce Lee, it's more speculation, even though I'm sure he was a great fighter, too. But uh, So Chuck Norris was awesome. But for some reason, he never really translated as well on screen. He's not traditionally charismatic like Van Damme or Bruce Lee. His, he was never a great actor, even though he was never terrible either. Uh, the, his fighting skills just, I don't know, it didn't look as good on screen as a lot of his, it did for a lot of his contemporaries. But um, something about him is just really cool. And uh, I always look forward to watching his films and all of their mediocrity. <laughs> but uh, So it was cool that he would appear in this film as well. But the one that got my attention the most was Scott Adkins. Um, Scott Adkins, he's not a big star, obviously. In fact, if he's known for anything, it, he was known as a, a special effect. Uh, he was in X-Men Origins Wolverine. He played Deadpool. Now, you might be thinking, wasn't that Ryan Reynolds? Well, that was only Ryan Reynolds in the beginning. Uh, when you see that character at the, the end, that's actually Scott Adkins. But um, on the direct-to-DVD market, he has made quite a few really impressive action movies. The Undisputed sequels were surprisingly good considering their direct-to-DVD sequels to a mediocre movie that nobody remembers. Uh, he did one called Ninja, which is kind of a ripoff of Ninja Assassin, I believe. And uh, you know, he's done a few others that, with Van Damme that were also really well made, like The Shepherd and Assassination Games. And he's just 
He's a reasonably good actor, but more importantly, his fight techniques look awesome on screen. He's very athletic. His kicks are unique. You know, when you see a Scott Atkins fight scene, it looks different from most people most people's fight scenes, including you know the greats like Tony Jaw, Jet Li, or Jackie Chan. So I really hope that he becomes a huge star, and I was glad to see him uh, in the lineup for the Expendable Expendables two. Uh, so is this a really good movie? Is it a great movie? Is it a disappointment? I liked it just as much as I liked the first film, but I like it for different reasons, which I love. Uh, this, to me, works because, you know, in true sequel form, you know, it's obviously bringing back all the elements that made the first Expendables really cool, but it just does them completely different. Uh, for example, the first film... You know, it was much darker, and I'm I'm talking literally in terms of lighting. It seemed like most of the action scenes took place at night. This one, almost all of it takes place during the day. The first film was more uh, in your face with the action. There's a lot more close-ups, a lot more uh, handheld camera work, and this one is more about wide shots and steady cam. Um, this really benefits the fight scenes because even though there there seems to be fewer fight scenes, uh, the camera work is never too jittery. I think it captured the action perfectly. And the choreography is surprisingly good considering this isn't a Hong Kong production. Um, I was a little disappointed in the fight scene between Stallone and Van Damme, but then I remembered that if you really judge it as more of a Stallone fight than a Van Damme fight, you'll like it a lot more because Stallone's much more of a brawler while Van Damme is a traditional martial artist. And uh, the fight is, seems to be playing more to Stallone's skill. So I wish they maybe did a little bit more with Van Damme's uh, abilities, but what can you do? But it was still a pretty good fight in its own right. Um, the Scott Atkins versus Jason Statham one was the best, though. Uh, Jason Statham surprisingly holds his own very well in terms of the action. I'm not sure if he's a martial artist at all or not, but... Um, you know, but he really does look pretty good on screen, even though you could tell that Scott Atkins is a whole, on a whole different level than him, but that turned out pretty well. Uh, it seems like where the first film aimed to be more intense, uh, the, this one is more about uh, you being able to see all of the action on screen without any problem whatsoever. The editing has scaled back quite a bit, so it's never too erratic. And um, it just looks really good. The the set pieces are much more ambitious and impressive. They seem like the explosions were a lot cooler. Uh, the gun battles were a lot more vicious. You got heads being blown off left and right. I was surprised at how gory the movie was because of that PG-13 scandal. I figured that uh, it might be a lightweight rated R film. But no, it is pretty excessive with the violence. No complaints there. Uh, and then at the end, when you see all these action stars get together for this big-ass action sequence, it was pretty awesome. I was really pleased with it. But let's talk about the the actors and how well they play their characters. This is going to be one of the more difficult elements of the movie uh, because it really does sacrifice what little plot it could have had as well as any kind of character arc for the sake of... Uh, fangasms <laughs> um, it really I, the first film while it was obviously made just so you can get all these stars together it at least had an attempt to have a, a character arc you know it's about these mercenaries you know deciding to risk their necks for a cause that they aren't really investing in and that really means a lot this one you don't really get that quite as much it's just a, a typical revenge story Stallone, um, he's still the main character, and he does just as good as he did in the first one. So take that as you will. I'm a pretty big fan of Stallone in general, and I thought he did a good job in the first one, so I thought he did a good job here. Um, Jason Statham's role is reduced a bit, even though he's still uh, prominent. But in terms of the character, you know, it's less about... you know One of the big elements of the first movie was it was about Stallone's and Statham's character's relationship. Uh, Statham is just sort of a, a second wheel here. He doesn't have a whole lot of relevance to the story, but Jason Statham is really cool as always, and he's still a lot of fun to watch. Terry Crews, uh, Cruz, he probably had um, his role expanded the most. It seemed like in the first film, 
they weren't really sure if they wanted to make him like the crazy psychopath dude or the comic relief. Well, this one pretty much solidifies him as the jokester. He has some of the funniest moments, and you know he's a really funny guy, and uh, I, I enjoyed watching him. Randy Couture's role is pretty much reduced. In fact, he's kind of pointless. <laughs> he has maybe one or two good scenes, but otherwise the movie doesn't really know what to do with him. Dolph Lundgren's role is increased a bit. Uh, he's also really funny. Um, some of the in-jokes, because in real life, Dolph Lundgren has a degree in chemical engineering, I believe, and they give that to his character as well, so there's a lot of good moments involving that. Uh, he's a lot of fun. Jet Li, sadly, he's only in the first 20 minutes or so. After the first major action scene, he leaves for the rest of the movie. That pissed me off because I really wanted to see him fight Van Damme or Scott Adkins, but... What can he do? Uh, at least he does get a pretty good fight scene before he does leave, so I guess I can't totally complain about that. Bruce Willis is pretty much playing modern-day Bruce Willis. Kind of boring, but still, you know, he does fine. He does good. Uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger is kind of a weak link. It's nice to see him back, but he's sort of rusty when it comes to acting. I felt they did they went way too far with the callback humor. Uh, all the Terminator references started getting really old, especially how Schwarzenegger would say them. Like, he'd do it, be like, I'll be back. And of course, he's saying it in a way that's supposed to remind us, you know, he's like, yeah, you remember, this is a line from Terminator, which I was in a long time ago. Uh, that kind of got annoying, but like I said, it was g- nice to see him back. God damn it. <laughs> I, how could I walk into that one? Uh... Chuck Norris is a blast. He's not in the movie a whole lot. And it's not like his acting has gotten better, but it's like space and time almost seem like it's bending to his will. He doesn't look like he's aged past 50, and he's like 73. Uh, Just whenever he walks on screen the movie just stops and admires how awesome he is. The music starts playing the the good, the bad, and the ugly theme. It's just a blast just seeing him there. And the movie has a lot of fun with him, and he has a lot of fun in that role. So I was glad to see him there. Jean-Claude Van Damme does good as the villain. He has a lot of fun, and he's pretty menacing. But I wish there was more of him. Um, He doesn't have as much screen time as Eric Roberts did in the first film. So you don't really hate him as much. But, you know, it was still pretty cool seeing Van Damme there. Scott Adkins pretty much reuses his Boyka voice from uh, Undisputed 2 and 3. And, um, yeah, in some ways he's actually more menacing than Van Damme. But once again, he was also underused. The newcomers... I can't think of the one dude. The one dude from The Hunger Games... I was not really looking forward to seeing him in this movie, but he was acceptable. He didn't make me angry. And then the girl, uh, Yu Nan, or Nan Yu, I don't remember how what her name was, you know, she does fine too. I wish they kind of went for a, a, an action starlet who I know of, though, like Michelle Yao, or, or I don't know if I'm pronouncing her last name right, or that chick from Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Okay, granted, that's also with her, but the Zhang Yi, Yi, I can't remember her name either. Uh, She was the girl in Rush Hour 2. You know, if they had one of those people, the casting would have meant a lot more to me, but otherwise the actor, the actress did fine. Um, I guess really the only thing left to talk about is the tone of the movie, because that's another thing they changed from the first film. The first film was more akin to a Stallone action movie in that the dialogue is pretty corny, but at the same time, it's said with such a straight face that it's, it's also kind of cool. So, like, when Jason Statham flattens du- the dude's basketball, he says something like, next time I'll deflate all your balls. You know, it's it's silly, but it's also badass. And Stallone pretty much mastered that. I always remember Cobra with it more. He says something like, you're a disease, and I am the cure. It's so stupid, but awesome at the same time. Well, this one is more like an Arnold Schwarzenegger movie in that, there's a lot of winking at the camera, and uh, you know it's like it knows how absurd it is, and it's just having a lot of fun with itself. So uh, I thought it did it generally well, even though, like I said, they relied too much on callback humor. But uh, I had a lot of fun with it. I thought it was just as good as the first film, and I'd recommend all fans of the first movie check this one out for sure. And even if you didn't like the first film, it does enough different that I think you should at least give it a look. Uh, If not in theaters, then on DVD. Although I'd prefer you watch it in theaters so I could get my Expendables 3, because so far this movie's underperforming financially. Can't allow that. 
I need my, my Expendables 3 where you have Seagal and Clint Eastwood potentially and Harrison Ford and Nick Cage. I want that movie, damn it, and you have to give it to me. So uh, that's really all I have to say. If you'd like to read my written review, please check the link in my description. Um, follow me t- on Twitter, go to my website and all that nonsense. I'll see you guys later.